All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And today I want to uh, deal with this article here. Um, as we're seeing this more and more. In fact, you know, I was watching a couple of different videos. One of them I, I saw you had a woman, where is this? Was it in Colorado? I think it was in Colorado or, or you know, one of those uh, states in the in the, the mid middle region. And um, yeah, yeah, it was one of some, somewhere around that area. But she was basically doing a video, as they call sounding the alarm on how migrants are now, um, you know, coming after citizens. Okay. You know, all in all, it's, it's still playing into the, the, the narrative or the hands of the elites, but, um, they're saying now that you have migrants that are, some of them are posing as, um, delivery, you know, uh, workers. And then when you open the door, they run up in there. Okay. She's saying that, you know, <laughs> you pretty much be ready to protect yourself, you know, your children as school starts back up and all of these things. And all across the board, if you really take a, a firm look at this place, it's beyond circling the drain. OK, it's beyond circling the drain. As a matter of fact, this place is 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 practically, you know, falling into a third world country as all forms of, of, of lawlessness is just setting forth, which how wish I mentioned that. Okay, when you go into Matthew 24, I believe it's a 12 verse, and it talks about um, because of iniquity, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That, when you look into the word iniquity, it goes into anarchy, right, without rule. And all the way from the top to from your um, legislative bodies, right, you have judges, right, so-called judges who are getting arrested, who are getting caught on camera saying crazy things. Right, you got a so-called president who's <laughs> people are even wondering if the guy's alive or not. Right, they're they're definitely uh, concerned about his mental health. Right, and 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 so even from that level all the way down to the economic turmoil that's going on, the lack of law enforcement, and even now, right, recent video or situation came up where pretty much had this officer that 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 shot the woman in the head. You know, you see the video, you can see, I mean, it doesn't look like she was going to do anything to him. And he told her beforehand he was going to shoot her in the face, right? And then I think some footage came out afterwards. He basically showed no remorse, right? So you have a shortage of so-called law enforcement. And then the ones that are there, you know, you end up seeing some of them doing things like this. So like I said, across the board, things are not looking good. Then you have the cases of the H5, you know, the angry bird that's that are rising. And it's it's like a flashback of 2019 all over again, because you had the same situation with the, the, the CV and nobody was really paying mind to it. But guess what? They were, you know, oh, we, we, there's, there's this, this case is this many cases reported here, this many cases reported there. And it wasn't until they started talking about a surge then they started talking about lockdowns, and that's when people started to pay attention, right, going into 2020 and so on and so forth. But it started before then. Whether manufactured or organic, doesn't really matter, right? Because it's still accomplishing the same objective. And that's what you're seeing with this Angry Bird, right? Now, you know, they're saying, oh, it's jumping really from uh, you having different cases. Really, they've been mentioning Colorado a lot. Okay, you have cases over there, cases in uh, China, cases over here. And just like that, it continues to pop up and pop up and pop up. So when you have meetings, right, like like the um, the the meeting that they had to grant the who that, right, uh, this this level of um, power over emergency like situations. I mean, <laughs> it's it's kind of like it's kind of like going to buy a gun to just, you know, keep it as a souvenir, right? They, they, they have the power. They want to put it in place. Why would they go through the trouble of gaining the power so they can't use it? What's the point? 
<laughs> right? So now that they've they've gone through that, you best believe now they need a, a situation in which to exercise that authority. Okay, now I have to double check if 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 they've you know already signed it and, and granted them those powers um, or whatnot. Last time I checked, I think they were about to or they were in the midst of it. But I have to double check. Nevertheless, the point is still the same, right? So it wouldn't be a surprise if this Angry Bird thing spirals into another situation. But maybe this time they might hit you with the poly crisis. Maybe this time it's not just a um, you know a, a disease going on. Maybe you have that. Then you have a, a cyber demic going on, right? And then you have economic turmoil. So you have all of these things happening at the same time. And people are getting desperate. This is Jeremiah chapter 51, verse... Actually, let me start at verse 6 and I'll jump. So it says, Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord, Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. See? So the Lord is now beginning that recompense that he is rendering on to her. Why? For all of the abominations that have been done and continue to be done in this land. So as it says, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul because the, the great judgment is gonna is really going to take place here. Of course, in other parts of the world as well, but Babylon is going to get hit very, very hard. So verse 8, I'm going to jump down. Babylon is suddenly fallen. Babylon representing America. Okay, as we're reading here in Jeremiah 51, the bulk of this chapter is prophetically speaking. And in prophecy, when you read about Babylon or the daughter of Babylon or Babylon the Great, it's talking about America. Of course, the term or the name America wasn't there at the time that these um, these uh, verses were written, but the prophets saw the future. Okay, and that's what they wrote down. So, uh, it says here, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. So, number one, the falling is what you're seeing here. The, some of the things I just described, the destructuring of this, this um, so-called country. And as it says, and destroyed, meaning that it's not going to rise back up. They will not be able to so-called make America great again. They will make it great in hardships, in attempts to try and make it great. But they won't. Because even for the elites, it's not in their agenda to make America great again. They they really want to centralize everything. And that, that means they need to level countries like this place by doing away with that constitution. So it says, how for her take balm for her pain? If so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. There's nothing they can do. No legislation. No reforms, no nothing to try and reverse the damage that has been done to this place. Now it's time for the effects. Okay? It's time for the effects now. It's too late. So we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go, everyone, into his own country. And that's what these, these uh, those of these other nations are doing. Right? A lot of them are leaving because the reasons for which they came here it's not, if you come here for opportunity, you come here, and most of the time, <clears throat> some of them that come here, they have businesses in, 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 um, in, uh, you know, their homelands, right? They have all of those, but they come here, they either, you know, they'll find some, some job to do, something to work on, right? And then, you know, build up, amass some wealth, and then go back. But when they come here, if it's, if it's hard, if, if what you came here for, the opportunity is not here, then what do you think they're going to do? So they have a place to go back to. A lot of you Israelites don't. So it says here, let us go everyone into his own country for her judgment reacheth onto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. And that's what people are starting to see now. So now people are trying to get out, but a lot of you are stuck in here. <laughs> people are trying to get out. People are trying to get in. At the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be to the fulfillment of the Lord's will. Okay, so seeing all these things happening, paying attention, watching on all fronts to the best of your ability gives you a, a sort of a holistic timeline as to 
how fast the Lord is moving with these prophecies because we know that no matter what, the things we're reading of here, the end goal, the end game, is coming. And we're only getting closer and closer to that point each day. And things are getting more and more crazy each day, more and more desperate each day, more and more dire each day. Now, there was an article that when I first read, that's what made me think about this lesson. And I'm just going to read the headline of it here from ZeroHedge.com. It says, the percentage of Americans that worry they won't be able to pay their bills is higher than it was during the Great Recession. So you tell me what's going on over here. You know, it's higher than it was during the Great Recession. People are afraid that they can't pay their bills. So according to history, according to just, you know, uh, uh, statistically speaking, what happens to societies when their citizens start feeling this way and start living like this? Crime rates go up because eventually people are going to get desperate, right? You can't pay your bills. Okay. Bills are one thing, but there are some recurring uh, expenses that everybody has to handle, right? Groceries for food, shelter, you know, health related things. So, okay, maybe you can't pay your car note. Maybe you are backed up on your electricity bill. Okay. But when it comes to something like food, you can't put that to the side. You're hungry today, you're going to be more hungry tomorrow. And then more the day after, and more the day after. And the more you are, the more desperate you are. The more desperate you are, the less reasonable you become. So when people start getting to that point, they're not going to put it off. And no, they're only going to get more and more desperate as time goes on, which is going to lead to them taking more and more drastic actions, like stealing food or stealing other things and, 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 and invading other people and taking their stuff. That's what eventually it leads to, <clears throat> which then just uh, 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 descends into more chaos and anarchy. All right. So it says here, according to a CNN poll that was just released, almost 40 percent of all U.S. adults say they worry most or all the time that their family's income won't be enough to meet expenses. And this is deliberate. You know, this is deliberate because eventually when people get desperate enough, guess what's going to happen? They're going to succumb to whatever relief package or solution is presented to them. Because they've tasted the, the hardships. They don't like it anymore. <laughs> Jumping around a bit, it says, just like everyone else, I remember the Great Recession as such a painful time. Sadly, the economic pain that we are experiencing now is just beginning. Ordinary Americans from coast to coast are being absolutely crushed by rising prices. You hear that? Rising. Rising. The prices didn't just rise and stop, they're continuing to go up. That's why people are complaining more and more. That's why this is from coast to coast. And that isn't going to change anytime soon. And I remember a year or two ago, you had farmers, you had people warning saying, hey, your prices are going to go up. Don't think that if it doesn't, because it hasn't gone up right now, you're good. No, the things that are affecting us now are going to affect you later on. Six months, eight months, 12 months down the line. It's like a ripple effect or a domino effect. But guess what? You're feeling it now. Okay? You're feeling it now while, while, while Sleepy Joe is enjoying his ice cream. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what I wanted to cover on that. And the whole point is, with all these, the, the, the reason why we do these lessons and <clears throat> we, we highlight the hardships that are happening and that are, that are coming is not just for fun. Okay, but it's for you to realize and see that, hey, I need to prepare. And how do you ultimately prepare? You got to seek the Heavenly Father and the Son. You got to seek Yahweh, Baasham Yahweh Shai. Because that is, at the end of the day, the message is that's the only way that you're going to make it out of what's coming. So we have to make you aware of what's coming and let you know what the solution is. And at that point, your blood is off our hands because we, we, we made you aware and we let you know what you had to do. You didn't do it. You deal with the consequences. That's it. So with that, Lord willing, that was edifying to the elect. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kudash, 
Until next time, Shalom.